Okay, I wanted to make a little video here talking about how to clean up the valve cover area of the 22RE, uh, specifically as it relates to all these vacuum hoses. If you see my other videos, I have on the channel some videos that kind of cover what different ones are, um, and you know, the whole motor and everything, how I got my truck and all that stuff. Uh, in this video, I want to do kind of a compressed version of that. So what we have up on the screen here is a picture of my friend's uh, truck here. And if you've been watching the, the last few videos, you know I've, I did a dual row timing chain upgrade for him. And uh, we've, I finally got the motor back together here. And one of the things I had to do was, in order to kind of clean up this, this valve cover area and make the motor you know look a little more presentable, I wanted to ditch that uh, crazy... Um, pipe manifold thing that comes on the 22RE and also uh, remove the VSV, the vacuum switching valves that, that sit on top of the valve cover just to uh, make accessing the, uh, and adjusting the valves easier in the future and to just give the motor a little bit, uh, you know, presentable look. So in this video, I'm going to kind of cover some of that. You can see here I've already run the hoses. I used the little original spacers that came on the truck and I've got all the smog stuff. Uh, if you see over here, I've got the VSVs, uh, the two of them, the, uh, let's see, the, the bottom one is the air suction because it's got the little breather cap on it. And then the top one is the EGR. Uh, and basically what I do is I just ran a very long six millimeter bolt into the bolt, uh, one of the little uh, bolt holes that's in the fender well there, and just cut some, you know, aluminum uh, rod with a hole in the middle, six millimeter hole in the middle, uh, and to allow these to kind of stand up uh, on top of one another. So that makes a real clean kind of installation. Now, uh, after removing this, uh, the, the little pipe craziness that they run all the hoses through over here, uh, you know, I had to put the, all these hoses back on the motor. And of course, even though I've done it on, on my particular motor, I had to kind of sit down and figure out like, okay, you know, this is a 1994, did Toyota change anything? And, and, you know, where all these hoses go? So I took a picture of the little plaque under the hood and it shows everything here, but you can see it's just crazy time. Uh, it's very difficult to kind of figure out what's going on. They got a lot of stuff on here that uh, we we removed from the truck. For example, uh, when it comes to this pressure regulator here, it's it's in the mix and goes all over the place. But uh, a lot of people on the forums and, and, and I myself, what we do is just run it directly to a vacuum source on the intake plenum and, and ditch the whole... Uh, you know, vacuum switching valve routine because it's it's really kind of not needed. Uh, the fuel pressure, as long as you apply a manifold vacuum to this uh, pressure regulator, the fuel pressure does just fine, and there's no need to have the computer involved in trying to figure out when to raise or lower the the fuel pressure. <clears throat> so you can see that they illustrate the the routing here with a series of pipes and hoses and then if you have air conditioning and if you don't and uh, as i cover in my other you know videos that w when you have air conditioning and you crank the wheel one way or the or the other uh with power steering or you turn on the air conditioner it puts a load on the motor and then so what they do is they have this vacuum switching valve that kind of uh, modulates the motor, I guess. So that, since we did away with the air conditioning and the power steering, uh, this whole idle up stuff got, got ditched with the, I think it was the power steering. And uh, let's see what else here. So that, that more or less just left the main smog systems. Now, I sat down at my desk and I uh, used you know, uh, Photoshop, although on the Mac it's called uh, Pixelmator. I use uh, Pixelmator and I kind of redrew this as it is now on the truck. And, and that's kind of the part I wanted to go over. So if you, you know, if you decide you want to kind of redo all the vacuum lines, you're going to hit a point where you're like, okay, all this stuff here has got to be connected over here and then over to these the VSVs. And 
you know, kind of how, how do I go about this? So the, the one, and if you look at kind of the uh, throttle body, you can see it's marked, and I, I've kind of highlighted the letters so you can see them more clearly. But, uh, uh, and then this is the, the facing the front of the motor down here. Uh, you can see that you've got P, and if we go over to this chart here, you, you can see that P is, is very simple to figure out. It is right here, in, and I've marked it in green, and it goes over to your uh, EVAP canister. And that's uh, this little canister right over here. You can kind of see a little bit better right there. And this, as I mentioned in my other videos, this canister is responsible for kind of sucking out gas fumes from the gas tank. So you definitely want to leave that connected. And you just see it run, around a little hose here, four millimeter uh, Gates vacuum hose uh, around here, I think it is, yeah. And then it just connects to that guy that's, that's marked P. So that's real convenient. That, and that, that P stands for purge. So it is purging out the fumes in the canister. So if you're rerouting your vacuum lines, that one's real easy to knock off the list. Just run a vacuum hose directly around the back of the uh, intake plenum and uh, right to the canister there. Now, that leaves us with three other ones. Here you can see E, R, and then the front one. So if we look at this guy, uh, this one is E and this one's R. And these two guys point directly over to the uh, left side of the vehicle. Uh, this one kind of angles back, and Toyota does a real nice job representing that. So you can see E straight across, R straight across, and then this front run, which I don't think it has a lettering, uh, normal culture there, or culture. Um, but for now, let's focus on these two. So what we got to do is we got to get this EGR valve and the EGR modulator back into the game. So how does that work? Now... If you look right here, you can see this little guy in the back is the actual EGR valve, and it has a uh, port. It has a hose back here that goes up to the bottom of the modulator. And if you look at this here, you can see they represent that there. So you got to connect that guy, and then the, on the EGR valve, that will leave you with this upper uh, vacuum port. And if you if you uh, look but I can't really see it. Let's see. Can we see it there? Eh, kind of. You can see the hose. I've got the hose running up to a T branch. So one part of the T go runs over the uh, vacuum switching valve, and then the other part of the T runs over to the back of this little modulator. And I and I have a little photo of that. So you can see. Oh, and here's a good shot of the actual top of the EGR valve. So that little that's the little port we're talking about. So that's got to go up to a T and then go to the back of this uh, vacuum modulator to uh, the port labeled Q. And if you look at our little diagram, you can see they do, they, they do have that listed there. Q, P, and R. So that corresponds to these guys here. Q, P, and R. Now, uh, if you look at kind of how I've redrawn this, and, and if you, you can see there's basically just the line that comes off this EGR vacuum switching valve here uh, on the inner uh, the inner little uh, nub there it goes over to a T effectively and then one of one of the T's runs over to the top of the EGR valve and then the other T runs to the, the back of that uh, uh, vacuum modulator. Now it's very clear here because I have marked it with colors but if you if you're trying to figure out where, you know, like, well, what is going on, man? Uh, this is not the most easy drawing to figure out. So that's why I always take these and redraw them. Um, now, on, uh, as far as the hoses that run from the throttle body to the vacuum modulator, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So E, if you see right there, E goes to P. And then R goes to R. So I got to do is just run, you know, two vac uh, two vacuum lines and you can see I got it right here. Uh E runs to that guy and then P runs to oh uh, sorry, uh R runs to R. So then if we look at close close up to that, there's R, there's P and then we go uh back here and you can see 
we've got E running right over there to P, and then we've got right there R running over to R. So that's, and that's just these guys, E and R. So that's that knocks out uh, these these guys here. So purge goes to the canister, E goes to P, and then R goes to itself, R. And then that leaves this guy here on the throttle body, which is more or less the, the vacuum source uh, for the whole show back here. So uh, this is what is kind of giving you the supply. But you got to run it through the EGR vacuum switching valve. So now, if you if you've done like I've done, and you've moved the vacuum switching valve for the EGR over here, what you're gonna have to do, and it's kind of a it's kind of a pain. You got to get in here and undo the uh, wiring harness a little bit, and then uh, redirect the the harness over here and plug it in. But you don't have to cut it and rewire it. Uh, it'll just kind of as long as you free it up, free up the tape from the factory, and then retape it, which is kind of a pain. But I use uh, 3M self fusing tape and just get in there and kind of you know monkey around until you get it taped back up uh, I, now if you pull the upper plenum off it's real easy because you can just uh, get in there and work but you get the EGR valve, uh, vacuum switching valve over here run run the uh, hoses to the uh, the ports uh, uh, the way they're here so one hose from the throttle body goes to the outer part of the EGR uh, vacuum switching valve and let me see if I can find it here that's I guess I don't really have a good picture, but you can kind of see right here what I've done. So it goes here, and then it swings around and goes under the intake plenum, and then it pops out uh, over, I believe it's that guy on the inner part. Let's double check that. Uh, oh, sorry, on the outer part. So that one there, uh, th snakes under there. And then it, that's it right there, going to the outer part. And then the inner part of the vacuum switching valve, uh, which is this guy here, is the one that goes back. And it goes to, uh, that's uh, this guy here. It goes around back. And then you can kind of see it right here. Goes into a T and drops down to the top of the EGR valve and then tees over and goes to the back of the vacuum modulator. So that that kind of helps uh, maybe if you're trying to f make heads or tails out of all this stuff. Now, uh, as far as the air suction, which is this little, this little guy here that hangs out underneath the intake runners, kind of back there towards your, you know, above where your starter, and your uh, oil filter on the 22RE is. Um, it has a vacuum lead that comes off of it. Uh, I don't know if I, I, don't, I don't have a great, yeah, I don't have a great picture of it, but you can, basically it's, it's underneath this, uh, the runners under here. So there's four runners that bolt into the cylinder head. And then in the back, there's, the, there's a little, uh, it's a air suction valve. And then you hook that to the air suction uh, guy, and that's the one that has uh, the little filter kind of thing on it. Uh, I should also mention that in the EGR valve, there is, uh, oh, sorry, not the EGR, in the uh, air suction, there is a check valve, and you got to make sure it's pointing the right direction. Uh, it connects up to the outer piece of the vacuum switching valve, and it and you can run it directly to the plenum. So, uh, here you can kind of see, let's see here, uh, you can kind of see right here, I've, I've taken out some of the factory fittings and I put a 90 degree little uh, 1 8 uh, stainless steel fitting uh, in here. It, it's a little tedious to get these installed and you can see I have another one back here pointing directly back at the firewall and that just loops directly over to that uh, pressure regulator. Uh, I'll put the links for where these come from. I think I get them from Summit Racing, perhaps. Uh, they're really nice. They're kind of pricey. I think each one is 10 or 15 bucks, but they're well worth the money. Uh, the only thing you got to do is on, 
uh, you gotta chase them with uh, one eighth by uh, let's see, it's a one eighth national pipe. I think it's twenty seven threads per inch, if I'm not mistaken. I'll, I'll put the link in the description for that too. You gotta you gotta chase the holes a little bit with that and expand the uh, major diameter on the threads, and then um, on the back one, it's kind of a hassle because you gotta take this fitting off because. Uh, this one here has to rotate around and it won't clear that little fitting. So you got to pop that fitting out, thread that, uh, and put some grease on the threads, uh, the tap, so it'll catch the, the threads, uh, shavings and stuff. Uh, ex open those holes up and then uh, I put these in. I think I put some uh, uh, Loctite, uh, can't remember, I think it's 545 for hydraulic thread lock. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to all that kind of stuff. Um, but you, you know, you, you basically, uh, use that as thread sealant and then away you go. And, and like I say, this, this one, this fitting here is the vacuum source that is, uh, driving this, uh, the VSV, uh, for the air suction. So that's why I've kind of rerouted it to the plenum. Now from the factory, you can see it, it goes up here and over here to a gas, some kind of little gas filter deal that supplies vacuum from the manifold but uh it's just as easy to to run your own and clean things up so that kind of gives you i hope a little bit of a road map and like i say uh you you, know, you can kind of knock a lot of this stuff out of out of the picture especially if you're not running uh you know air conditioning or power steering or, or any of that stuff and uh kind of just uh, simplify your life and if you're faced with having to get the hoses from this section here of the throttle body back to these guys uh screenshot this little diagram right here and it, it should make it pretty easy like i say p goes to purge e goes to the the p port r goes to r and then that leaves this guy which is kind of the one that's uh, uh running directly over to the uh, vacuum switching valve for the egr and that, that's pretty much the whole deal and that cleans everything thing up uh, these hoses, I, I buy a 50-foot spool of uh, the Gates 4mm hose off, uh, off Amazon. And then that way you can kind of just, uh, you know, thread it through and, and cut it and trim it exactly to size. And it, it, it turns out real nice. So anyway, just thought uh, I would post that now that we're done with uh, redoing my buddy's truck and it's uh, fired up and all that stuff. Um, I also, you can see over here, I also ended up having a switch and i have a video about uh putting in these wires and doing the coil you can kind of see over here that i ended up using the original igniter and then i just uh tapped into the the trigger wires and kind of ran my old, own little uh coil wires there and that that was allowed us to get the um the uh the msd uh 8222 uh, coil in the mix which i i'm really happy with how it turned out um, if anyone's interested, uh, let me know in the comments and I can, I, maybe I can make a video specifically showing kind of how that, that thing, uh, kind of came together. So, but, and then you can see over here, uh, we put in the PC 925 battery and then, uh, don't really, just temporarily ran some bungee cords, but gotta say bungee cords, you know, cheap and easy and it works pretty well. Uh, at some point maybe we'll make a custom bracket for that, but. I think the truck turned out pretty nice. Real happy to have saved it from the junkyard. Uh, like I say, if you have any questions, you know, uh, when it comes to reinstalling this, hopefully this video will kind of get you back on the road. And uh, what you know, whether your mo motor's modified or not, it's just it's just nice to feel confident as to kind of where all these hoses go and what are their jobs and you know what are they doing. So. Okay, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to use the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching.